We're going to look at a case study of one of my patients who is a 55-year-old woman who told me that uh, in 2013 she crashed. Now this is a healthy woman who was always active, always loved, you know, the, she was a weekend warrior, riding her bike, going for walks, loving life, loving food and cooking, um, just enjoying life. And then 2013, uh, all of a sudden the lights went out. She just crashed. When she crashed, she couldn't walk. Uh, just standing for one minute was exhausting. It hurt, hurt. She would have severe leg pains and exhaustion just from standing. She couldn't breathe. Very difficult time breathing. Um, as a result of all her physical symptoms that prevented her from living life, uh, she went into depression and the depression vacillated between anxiety one day it would be anxiety the next day it would be depression she was at a loss for words couldn't articulate how she was feeling and was just you know really horrible just a, a very happy woman one day and the next day can't function can't participate in the things that she loved doing in life um, so it was very devastating. So when she started, you know, she started seeking out other things um, back around 2013, the conventional doctors and, you know, they ran all the blood and nothing was that abnormal. You know, there was a few little things that showed up, but nothing to to uh, warrant her symptoms that she was experiencing so she started seeking out other alternative practitioners and it has been just struggling since really 2013. When I saw her in April of 2019 we ran our first hair tissue analysis and of course she was in a four low pattern. She was in a four low pattern in fast oxidation. As we know, adults should never be in fast oxidation. So what that means, her sodium and potassium were elevated in comparison to her calcium magnesium. So we see that what is causing her adrenals, because sodium potassium is always representing the adrenal glands. So what's causing the stress in the adrenals? And we start to get glimpses of, well, there's metals in her. We see the lead already showing up. We see there's some mercury, there's some aluminum. Her phosphorus is low. So whenever we see low phosphorus, we know phosphorus is the ATP. It's the P. It's the energy. And so whenever there's low phosphorus levels, you got to start thinking a lot of energy issues and producing ATP. You also have to think about digestive stuff because anytime the phosphorus is below a 12, it's usually due to some mold and candida infections as the number one culprit for causing it. And so we know that she's uh, riddled with some gut dysbiosis. We know that she's riddled with metals. We know that she's in a four low and a four low pattern is really it's it's a collapse it's a real exhaustion that you know you can be in a four low pattern a month in the bahamas will not fix it you are burnt out you are exhausted you are depleted you are in the tunnel of death if you do not correct the pattern so we know that she's in this four low pattern and behind the four low pattern there's many etiologies there's psychological there's emotional there's absolute physical stuff um, but the number one thing with a four low pattern is calcium dysregulation something is causing calcium to be dysregulated in her and so one of the main uh, culprits for causing calcium dysregulation, not the only thing, but it's a main one, is the metal lead. Lead displaces calcium. Lead also displaces zinc, it displaces copper, it displaces iron and chromium. So lead is, is enemy agent number one. And we're going to look at this as we go forward in analyzing her tissue profile. As we know, lead is the metal of Saturn. Saturn typically takes 29 to 30 years to rotate around the sun. So if lead is lodged in deep bone or in the brain or anywhere, 
it takes time for it to come out. So if it's in the bones, that's 30 years to displace the deeper levels of lead. So this is why we're gonna do serial hair tissue analyses because it has to go slow. You have to work with the adrenals, you have to work with the portals of elimination as we start to excavate these metals out. Lead has a profound effect on the blood. It impedes one of the zinc enzymes. Remember we said lead displaces zinc. Zinc is needed for the porphyrin ring in making our blood. And so it, it really inhibits the enzymes involved in hemoglobin synthesis. Lead weakens the bones because lead displaces the calcium. And so when we think of the bones that can be our, our garden variety, degenerative joint diseases, so our arthritis, our rheumatoids, our back pains, our rickets, our gout are all associated with lead toxicity affecting the musculoskeletal system. But it also affects the nervous system, causing our anxiety, our depressions. It also uh, lowers IQ. It's one of the number one causes of mental retardation in children. So lead has a profound effect on our physiology as it is the metal of Saturn representing death, darkness, aging, chronos, father time, and if we don't deal with the lead, father time will be speeding up. It will take us to the grave as the grim reaper comes to take. So we got to deal with this lead and usually when we see this four low pattern and we see uh, already on her first test showing signs of lead toxicity as we will explore. About five months later we ran her second hair tissue analysis in July of 2019 and we see that you know um, the thing that stood out for me is the lead went up, okay? We're starting to mobilize a little bit more lead out of the tissues. We see the cadmium going up. We see the aluminum went down a little bit, but the nickel went up. And then all of a sudden, we see the zinc skyrocketing. It went from, you know, a good 18 to now a 31. So that tells me that you know, zinc belongs inside the cell. That's where it does its magic. 99% of the, of the zinc is intracellular. So when it's showing up high, it's telling me it's being excreted. You know, it's getting into the blood and then into the urine and it's being excreted out there or it's showing through the, the sweat or out through the feces or through the hair. So when it shows up high on, on the hair, we know that the zinc enzymes aren't working because zinc is not inside the cell where it belongs. So we start to see this elevated zinc um, as lead displaces the zinc, as cadmium displaces the zinc. So we see that there's a zinc blockade of these metals. And that's what this hair tissue test is really telling me besides the obvious of the four low pattern and um, you know just really the, the low phosphorus the ATP for the phosphorus the digestive issues with the phosphorus then we fast forward to the third test and we see you know that was taken in December of 2019 and we see that the sodium potassium ratio improved it went from 1.63 to 3.33 so that's telling me that something good is going to happen she's going to start you know the adrenals are picking up so she could start mobilizing some metals out and so right now on the third test all the metals decrease basically um and the zinc is you know is still high but it's coming down so that's telling me that maybe the zinc is starting to get into the cells um, but it's it's really you know again we're doing serial hair tissue analyses when we're in a four low pattern that that's a long-term chronic standing pattern of depletion of exhaustion of just really a burnout so now we're gonna fast forward to look at the fourth test and what stands out on the fourth test which was taken not too long ago in May of 2020 we see the sodium went up, the potassium went up, we went into fast oxidation, and we see, look at the lead. It went from 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.146 
to 0 0.790. That's a sevenfold increase of lead being dumped out. That caused the calcium to go low. That caused the zinc to go low because as the lead comes out of the cells, now the calcium can get in, the zinc can get in, and that can start driving the enzymes and doing all the functions that calcium and zinc are doing. So we start to see this lead being dumped and so it takes a lot of energy to mobilize these metals out and so the phosphorus came down and so it was already low so it's it's now at a nine because it took a lot of energy to start mobilizing these metals out and so she was struggling over the last you know four or five months um, having some retracing symptoms having some part of that exhaustion that she experienced in 2013 she had some moments of you know of that showing up her emotions were a little bit all over the place because she started to feel you know feeling uh not as good as she was doing previously because we're starting to mobilize the metals out but if we don't deal with these metals they become our cancers our parkinson's our brain dementia diseases and all of our chronic diseases that will put us to an early grave so getting the metals out is a celebration getting the lead out is a major celebration and so i just wanted to tie in when we start to see a four low we start to think calcium dysregulation as we think calcium dysregulation what's blocking the calcium and in this case lead is a major culprit so as we start to remove the lead we're going to start increasing her vital force and she can start healing so this is a very very positive sign that we're seeing so again you probably may notice that the sodium potassium went up because you need energy to drive these metals out and so remember I said that cadmium blocks zinc cadmium can block one ion of cadmium can block thousands of ions of zinc and so just by these metals coming out is really a celebration and we're moving her forward and it's just good to see but we still have a lot of work to do this is why we do serial hair tissue analyses as we monitor her progress during a mineral balancing detoxification program so that's what i wanted to report today and thank you for taking the time to listen to this short case study.